Good day, everybody. How are you all doing? Today, we are going to talk about 3D manufacturing. So without further ado, I'll share my screen with you. So as I said, today we are going to talk about 3D manufacturing, okay? So the agenda for this talk is uh, first I will introduce, give an introduction to 3D modeling. Then we're talking about subtracting manufacturing, then additive manufacturing, then parametric design, direct design and practice with AutoCAD. The power of 3D modeling. <laughs> Purpose to introduce students to the basics of engineering graphics and 3D modeling. Student will learn to use on shape by completing tutorials in and out of class. Teams will then create an on shape model and 3D print an object. The default project is the multi week 3D model print. Duplo project. Students will design, model using Onship, print and test a Duplo, a larger cousin of Legos. Engineering design with 3D solid models. A significant portion of engineering design is done using 3D solid models created with software such as AutoCAD. 3, 3D models are used to visualize objects during design. They're also used by computer numerical control CNC machines to automatically make objects by subtraction or by addition. CNC is a computerized manufacturing process in which pre-programmed software and code controls the movement of production equipment. CNC machine Ning controls a range of complex machinery, such as grinders, lids, and turning mills, all of which are used to cut, shape, and create different parts and prototype. Next, I'm going to talk about subtractive manufacturing. Subtractive manufacturing is a material removal process that starts with solid blocks, bars, rods, of plastic or metal, which are shaped by removing material through cutting, boring, or drilling. In a computer numerical control or CNC, a virtual model designed in CAD software, CAD software, serves as input for the fabrication tool. Software simulation is combined with user input to generate two tool paths that guide the cutting tool through the part geometry. These instructions tell the machine how to make necessary cards, channels, holes, and any other features that require material removal. Subtracting manufacturing processes are typically used to create parts in plastics or metals for prototyping, manufacturing tooling, and end use parts. Subtractive manufacturing processes are ideal for applications that require tight tolerances and geometries that are difficult to mold, cast, or produce with other traditional manufacturing methods. In additive manufacturing, multiple layers of material are laid down in various types of sh various shapes to create the object. 3D printing is an example of additive manufacturing. In additive or subtracting manufacturing, the 3D model file is used to input the information that the CNC machine uses to create the object. Additive manufacturing or 3D printing. In contrast to the subtractive process of removing material from a larger piece, additive manufacturing or 3D printing process build objects by adding material one layer at a time with each successive layer bonding to the preceding layer until the part is complete. Just like subtractive CNC tools 
additive manufacturing technologies create parts from CAD models. CAD is computer-aided design. Preparing models for 3D printing with print preparation or slicer software is mostly automated, making job setup substantially easier and faster than with CNC tools. Depending on the technology, the 3D printer deposits materials, selectively melts and fuses powder or cures liquid photopolymer materials to create parts based on CAM data. Again, computer-aided manufacturing data. Additive manufacturing is ideal for a range of engineering and manufacturing applications, including prototyping, manufacturing, tooling, and casting patterns, as well as short run, bridge production, and custom manufacturing of final parts. So here you see two types of machine. The one on the left is a CNC milling machine, which is subtractive. And the one on the right is a dimension 3D printer, which uses additive manufacturing technology. 3D printing at RCBC. Okay. <clears throat> so there are several printers available for use in first year and sophomore engineering clinics. We have four creative, uh, Creality printers and three raised 3D Pro two printers. A number of plastic materials are available in different colors. Um, PLA, <coughs> which are in different colors, ABS in yellow color, CPE in white color, and polypropylene, which is in natural color. 3D printing using rope pump. A rope pump is a simple human-powered water lifter used in less developed regions, especially Central America and Africa. A rope with print pistons attached approximately every meter. See the left image in the figure on the next slide is pulled through a pipe with one end at the bottom of a well and the other just above the ground level. So here is a picture of rope and pump Piston. So you see the rope, then next is printed, and then the rope is pulled through a pipe. Okay. <clears throat> the rope is joined at each end to make a loop. At the bottom of the well, it moves around a ceramic guide. At the top of the well, it passes around the wheel with a crank. The crank is used to turn the wheel, pulling the rope through the lift pipe. The pistons push ground water to the top of the pipe to fill water containers. Students in an upper level clinic class at Rowan University designed rope pump improvements for Concern Universal, a charity introducing rope pumps to the Gambia. The students build their own rope pump. To make the pistons, they obtained several from Gambia, carefully measured them, created a 3D model, and used a 3D printer to produce the number they needed. Some of the resulting pistons are shown in the image on the right of the on the right in the previous figure. And we'll go back to the previous figure. You see the pistons in the right. Okay. Parametric and direct design. 3D solid modeling generally falls into two categories, parametric design and direct design. In parametric design, the absolute and relative size of design features are specified using numeric values and rule-driven relationships. Sketches generally start with two-dimensional lines, curves, or geometric shapes, which are modified to produce three-dimensional models. In direct designs, on the other hand, the features are modified through simulated interactions with the object, such as pulling, pushing, twisting, etc. <laughs> this is a uh, view, isometric view, isometric view of a shaft mount 3D model. A 3D computer model is created using software to mathematically locate virtual lines, surfaces, and or shapes in three-dimensional space. The shaft mount in the previous figure 
was created by using straight and curved lines and is called a wireframe. However, it was rendered to look like a solid part. A wireframe can be converted into surfaces and or shapes. A 3D model can also be created from scratch using surfaces or solids. Example, by joining, extruding, and subtracting 3D shapes, boxes, cylinders, etc., to create a virtual solid object. 3D computer models can be used for much more than simply displaying for making or making 3D objects. They can also be used to simulate the performance of real objects. Simulations can estimate many things, such as distribution of forces, heat, fluid pressure throughout an object or the fatigue of an object's components. AutoCAD and other Autodesk products such as PTC Creo and SolidWorks include features that model forces on objects and temperature distributions. Basic features of AutoCAD. AutoCAD is renowned in industry as being among the best 3D modeling tools, 2D modeling tools. Recent versions of AutoCAD with additional features and updates can create 3D renders. Transforms 2D layouts into 3D models, no matter how complex. Gets a 3D print of your model so you have a physical prototype to test the durability of your design. Makes 3D drafting as user-friendly as possible without compromising the model's quality. Practice using AutoCAD. Goals, practice creating a revolve feature using an existing sketch. Practice creating an extrude feature using an existing sketch. Determine how to create an extrusion by sketching on a face and practice applying fillets to specific edges. So the instructions are open the one shape document, on shape document, on shape instructor kit 2.2.1, basic features one. Create the revolve feature shown to the right using the existing cage. Create the extrude on the left side of the part using the existing sketch. Note the thickness should be set to 0.25 inches. Hint, be sure to select the correct sketch faces and end times, end types for both features. Create the sketch shown in the image to the right on the right face of the revolved cylinder. Create the extrusions on the right side of the part. The total thickness of the extrusion is 0.3 inches and it extends into the part by 0 0.5 inches. Hint. You will need to use multiple features to create the geometry. Create a hole in the right side of the part that extrudes up to the face shown in the image on the right. When creating sketches for the two holes on the top faces of the part, use diameter of 0.12 inches for both the holes. Make sure the holes are centered on the faces. For the hole on the left side, ensure that it's extruded to the depth of 0.7 inches. For hole on the right side, ensure that it's extruded to the depth of 0.41 inches. Image shown to the right. Add fillets to the edges of the cylinder using the radius of 0.05 inches. Add fillets to all external edges on the left side of the part, exclude the holes using a radius of 0 0.05 inches. Add fillets to all external edges on the right side of the part, excluding holes using a radius of 0 0.05 inches. How, how is it assessed? Select the part in the features list. Click on the icon in the lower right corner on the on shape, on the on shape interface. What is the volume of the part? So today we talked about CNC, 
computer numerically controlled manufacturing. We talked about basic features of AutoCAD, computer aided design. We also talked about, we also <clears throat> discussed practice or we practiced how we can practice using AutoCAD. So I will stop here today. If you have any question or comment, you can write me a note. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like this video, please share with your friends. You and your friends can send me <coughs> or can subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. Please do not forget to check out my channel every day because I come back every day and solve all kinds of math and science problems. So I'll be back next time with another interesting problem. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Take care. See you later.